moments. Oh, there we are. And Kena is right on cue as the first one. Good morning, my dear. Trust you are well. Uh, you always get the first prize, Kena. <laughs> we'll wait a few moments to see who else may be joining us. Be glad you're here on this uh, cold, snowy day. And Janet, good morning to you, my dear. Thank you for all your assistance. Uh, and Chris Finney, oh my goodness, uh, greetings to you from Florida. Hope, uh, hope things are a bit warmer down there. I just touched something. Uh, and Carol, good morning to you. Good to have you with us, Sharon. Glad that you are here, Victoria. So glad that you are with us, Sharon Berry. Good morning. And Marion, thank you for joining us. Oh. Uh, thank you all for being here. We'll wait just uh, one more minute. Uh, let's see who else may pop on. Well, it is nine, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, Lynn, I see that you're here. Good morning. Uh, as a new day dawns, and a cold one at that, uh, so may our spirits rise uh, and unite in this time of prayer and devotion, uh, a ministry of Grace United Methodist Church here in Manassas, Virginia. It is a delight to be with you uh, once again. And uh, I trust that you are all well and continue to navigate uh, these challenging days with uh, grace and with hope. Uh, Judy, good morning. Uh, glad that you are here. And Anne, uh, greetings to you, my dear. Uh, for those uh, who are new to Grace, or who, uh, my name is Rudy Tucker, and I am a part of a wonderful team of colleagues uh, providing support to these Tuesday and Thursday prayer sessions. Um, if you are regular, and many of you are, thanks for logging on once again. And if you've just started participating, uh, or even if this is your first time, uh, special thanks as well. Uh, as a matter of review, uh, for the past few weeks and uh, a few more to come, our devotional time has focused on one of the saints, uh, ordinary women and men who got commandeered by God to make the ways of God more real to others. Uh, before we hear about today's special character, uh, let's begin uh, with a prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us now by your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all that we do, direct us to the fulfillment of your purposes. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, Alzira, good morning. Uh, glad that you're here. Debbie, good morning to you. Uh, so glad that you all could be here, a part of this morning prayer session. Now, with Pastor Janet's uh, permission and blessing, I am venturing far afield from the resource that we've been using and offering up a saint who is with us not only in spirit, uh, but in body as well. I told Janet the other day that in the course of my reading in recent weeks, I kept running into the work of Lovett Weems. Some of you perhaps have heard Lovett speak at district or conference events. Uh, be that as it may, uh, 
with his name and work uh, before me time and again, I figured that God was up to something. And maybe, just maybe, I should lift him up as one of God's living saints this morning. Janet said, uh, go for it. So uh, here we are. Uh, I, I first came to know Lovett Weems through his work at Wesley Seminary in Washington, D.C., where he served for many years as a professor of church leadership and the director of the Lewis Center for uh, Church Leadership. Uh, a product of Mississippi, uh, who following his schooling, returned to the state and served as a United Methodist pastor during a very challenging time in the states and our nation's history uh, as regards to race relations. When, when our paths crossed uh, many decades later, uh, I came to know a man who brought years of pastoral experience to the academy. His perceptive observations of church life, history, and practice enabled him to be and continue to be a wonderful pastor uh, to clergy and laity alike. Uh, he has uh, co-authored uh, several books with Tom Berlin, uh, the pastor uh, down the street at Flores, which I commend to you. Uh, perhaps a Sunday school class would, uh, would like to take one of these works on if you haven't already. Uh, while Lovett's academic work is top-notch and grounded in, in solid research, I, like so many, uh, appreciate Lovett for his gracious manner and the personal stories he so often tells during his presentations. Uh, let me pause just briefly. Sylvia, good morning. And Jen, good morning to you, my dear. Uh, one of my favorite uh, Lovett Weems stories is about a priest in London named John. Uh, Father John felt called to work with the city's poor, or that city's poor. However, he was never assigned to a poor parish. Uh, after some time of prayer and discernment, he decided to take a leave from the church that he was, uh, had been assigned and work as a street sweeper in London. Now, let me, let me pause and uh, offer a parenthetical comment. Uh, in, in the course of this pandemic, we have... Uh, seen folk in, in completely new lights uh, 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 and given thanks for their labors. Uh, of course, our doctors and, and nurses and all the medical personnel come uh, to mind first. But uh, there are others, uh, our grocery workers and our delivery folks. But I have also been mindful of our sanitation workers and, and are we grateful that they come each week to to pick up our trash. Uh, I, I, one, of my, one of my golfing buddies uh, shared with me uh, a couple months ago that it, it's been his practice to, to call city officials and get the names of his uh, uh, folk uh, who pick up his trash and he provides a little Christmas uh, bonus for them. And uh, I thought that was wonderful and I've tried to do the same. But uh, in addition to that, in the course of my prayer walks throughout the community, uh, whenever I see a, a, a tr sanitation truck coming my way, I usually just wave and, and give them a thumbs up. I, I was uh, walking with one of my kids uh, this season and, and uh, I said, do you, do you know that person? I said, no, I just, just wave and, and uh, give them a thumbs up. And, and, and invariably, though, they will wave back with a smile. And so. Uh, uh, when I thought of uh, Lovett's story and it uh, just brought to mind some other things as well. So anyway, back to, back to Father John. Thank you for indulging me on that. Each day, uh, John went out with the street sweepers uh, to clean the streets of the city. He worked beside them and with them, and they never knew that he was a priest. In time, uh, one of the most popular street sweepers became ill and after a short illness uh, died. Uh, the other street sweepers were shocked. They had no idea that their colleague was so sick. 
If we had only known, they said to themselves, if we had only been told that he was sick, we might have been able to, to do something for him. And now we'll never be able to do anything for him. And Johnson says, well, why don't we give him a good funeral? The street sweepers all replied that they would never know how to give someone uh, a funeral. Uh, how would they begin? Well, John told them that he would help plan uh, a service for their friend. And he then revealed to them that he was a priest. Together they planned the service. And on the day of the funeral, hundreds of sweet sweepers, <laughs> street sweepers, uh, Thank you. Street sweepers, uh, say that uh, term a couple times fast, street sweepers, filled the church. And Father John came out in all of his robes and vestments and led a beautiful service. Toward the end, one befuddled and day's worker stood up toward the front of the congregation turned around and faced his fellow street sweepers and said in amazement, are there any other priests among us? Are there any other priests among us? Well, the church has sought to answer this very question time and time again. The author of the letter to the Ephesians writes to the believers, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God. Martin Luther, the great church reformer of the 16th century, wrote about the priesthood of all believers, that every Christian, was and is a priest to each other. And C.S. Lewis, the 20th century author, once noted, the church exists for nothing else but to draw men and women into Christ, to make them little Christ. Today, we can also answer that worker's question in the affirmative. There are indeed other priests among us, unlikely characters, one and all, whose lives and witness in small and great ways reveal the heart of God's love and grace to us in surprising yet meaningful ways. I am grateful uh, to love at Weems, uh, a fellow citizen with the saints, one of many teachers and guides who helped me live a more faithful life. And in this moment, I'm going to invite you to silently name another living saint in your life who has done and or continues to be and do the same for you. Let's pause for just a brief moment and call to mind uh, these persons in our lives. For the priests that grace our lives each day, we give thanks. And yes, Lord, for the grace that enables us to be priests to each other, we give thanks as well. Amen. All righty, let me just check here. Uh, Jim Rabinsky, welcome. Jean, uh, we're glad that you're here. Sheila, good morning. Chris Lowe. Marilyn and Jim, delighted that you are here this morning. And I uh, gotta scroll back up a little more. I think I missed a couple. Anne, I think I got you. Th thank you. And Lynn. Ah, uh, oh, yes. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Terry, good. Terry Wiseman, yes. Good morning to you. I think I've got everybody now. Um, well, we, we turn to our prayer concerns, and uh, Pastor Janet sent me a list of concerns that have come through the church office uh, yesterday afternoon. 
and I want us to be attentive uh, to these. Uh, and there, uh, as you can imagine, it's a, a lengthy list once again. So I will try to move uh, through these in, a, in a, an attentive way, prayerful way. Uh, prayers for Jim, who had further cataract procedures on Friday. Uh, prayers for Tammy, who has COVID, and for Tammy's family, uh, including her son Donovan, as they are uh, facing uh, incredible challenges now. Prayers for Jonathan's neighbor, who was recently hospitalized. Jordan asked for prayers for her friend, who's very sick with cancer. Prayers for Christine's friend, Karen, in Florida, who suffered a, a massive stroke. Uh, Jarlene asked for prayers for Jennifer, dealing with complications uh, from COVID. Uh, Teresa requests prayers for uh, a greater sense of God's mercy as well as for all who are facing uh, challenging times. Uh, Katie asked for continued prayers for Garth, suffering from cancer and COVID. Moses and Tanya pray for peace for everyone. Gail and Gary asked for prayers for their friend Jan, who has a brain tumor and has upcoming surgery. Uh, Victoria asked for prayers for good results for Des, her dad. Uh, from his uh, brain MRI and needle biopsy. Uh, Jeff and Ann asked for prayers for their son, Justin, as he deals with ongoing mental health issues. Uh, Beth requests continued prayers for uh, their friend's oldest son, Ryan, who is battling brain cancer. Barbara and Jim ask for prayers for their neighbor, Linda, who is very ill with COVID. Prayers for a school family who lost their son last week. Prayers for Lynn's sister-in-law, Catherine, and Lynn's brother, Steve's family, on the passing Friday of Catherine's father. Uh, Barbara is thanking God for this beautiful day and Grace United Methodist Church. Paul and Debbie ask for prayers for unity for our country, safety for our leaders, and wisdom as they make decisions for our future. Linda's family has lost three persons to cancer since October and has uh, several others in hospice care. So uh, we are mindful of Linda and her family as they deal with multiple losses. Prayers for Dave and Darlene's son, Jason, who continues with more testing at UVA Hospital. They ask for prayers for Randy. Uh, Alicia has asked prayers for her colleague, Sherry. And I would ask uh, prayers for a childhood friend, Maury. Uh, Sherry, good morning to you. And Janelle, glad that you have joined us as well this morning. Uh, these are the many concerns that have come through the Grace Office. And I sense that they have come from not only the Grace community, but from all uh, parts of the U.S. Uh, that have been uh, logging in to Grace online. And so uh, let us uh, take all of these uh, along with our collective uh, joys and concerns to God this morning. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, source of blessing upon blessing, giver of grace upon grace, thank you for the gift of this new day and this occasion when we, citizens with the saints, your beloved daughters and sons, and priests one to another, can unite our hearts and voices in prayer. We do so confident in your desire, O oh God, to draw near and move among us even now. And because of your goodness and mercy, we are bold in presenting the request, spoken and unspoken, offered through this, your church. 
bring healing to those broken in body, mind, and spirit. Rest to the weary, strength to the weak, peace to the anxious, courage to the timid, comfort to the grieving, hope to those longing for good news, reconciliation to those divided by matters great and small. Holy God, when so many aspects of our lives and this world seem so large and daunting, seemingly insurmountable, remind us yet again of your power and will to make all things new and whole. Teach us yet again that you do some of your best work through people like us. And so we pray that whatever we do and wherever we go today, allow us to catch a deeper glimpse of you and all that you are doing to transform this world. And yes, Lord, whenever others look at us today, allow them to catch a glimpse of you and your wonders at work in us. We thank you for all the ways you enable us to be priests to each other, offering care at just the right time and with just the right measure. In this moment, I give pause for any to silently offer a petition to you now. Confident in your abiding love, we offer this prayer and all our prayers in the name of the giver of life, the Lord of love, the hope of the world. Yes, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, dear ones, I, I close with this blessing that has become our official uh, send-off. Uh, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors and computer screens. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Look forward to being with you on another occasion soon. Bye now.